they had a line that they would put on the drum head. They called it the spine of the drum head. They would put that line on there, and we were supposed to do the same thing that we did with the calf heads. We were supposed to play in one of those four quadrants and line the head up uh, based off of that, do the same testing. Uh, now, <clears throat> to me, um, I never, it seemed more of a marketing ploy. It seemed more trying to convince the old timpanists that plastic heads were better and they should buy their plastic heads because they still had the spine on there. I'm not sure if it actually existed. And the reason I think that is that over time, that spine has gone away. These drums in front of you do not have spines on them. The drums over at Alf's do not have spines on them. Um, but you do see spines on timpani. The drums we have in our practice room, they do have spines on them because those heads are about 15 years old. So they've gone away as we've gone through it. So if you have spines on the head, ideally the spine should be at a 45 degree angle from where you're playing. And one of those four quadrants is going to sound the best. If you don't have a spine, which these do not have a spine, you can mount them basically any way you would like. Um, I typically mount these, I look at the, the best looking part of the head before I put it on and then I mount it on there. I also examine uh, the flesh hoop. The flesh hoop is a piece of metal that goes around and there's a seam at one point and I want to make sure that seam is not where I'm playing. And so usually I have that seam somewhere other than my exact beating spot so I can make sure I can sound the best. Um, but that, that spine is an important thing to think about because if you come to a school and again the heads are older, you might find that spine and that's ideally where you're supposed to play in relationship to it. All right, let's talk about tuning mechanisms for drums. Uh, we wanted to, we change these drums are again are, are um, tunable and we tune using pedals. There are four types of tuning mechanisms that uh, Cook talks about in the book. We're going to talk about all four of them. Three are kind of important. One is about the most important, and that's going to be the first one we talk about. So the first uh, one, that, one that these drums and the drums over at Alice have are called uh, accelerator or balanced action. Balanced action is the, the term that, that Cook uses in the book, but it's also called accelerator pedal. And this is found on page 168. If you look, uh, figure 5.4 shows a picture of a balanced action drum. That's exactly what these drums are. Uh, these are the Ludwig drums. It's exactly the picture that what you see there. So we change the pitch by either pushing up with our toe or putting, push, pushing down with, uh, and pitch goes up and we push down with our toe. Pitch goes down and we push with our heel. Um, just like the accelerator on your car. Same kind of idea. So the way that these work is that the head is under quite a bit of tension and I have my pedal that I move up and down. Now the problem is if if I just had a pedal and the head, when I release my foot from the pedal, it would slam down on the ground because the head is pulling with so much tension. So if you'll notice on that page, on page 168, underneath the drums, there's a little thing that kind of sticks up and there's a knob on it, all right? Inside of there is a spring. The spring is designed to be balanced with the tension of the head, all right? So you have this spring down there that Ideally, when I move the drum, do the pitch of the drum, take my foot off of it, that spring has been uh, adjusted and is the right tension to keep the head right exactly where you left it so it doesn't move one way or the other. Um, now that is adjustable. You can see, again, that knob, turn it to the right, it tightens the spring, turn it to the left, it loosens the spring, and that is an adjustment that you make for the drums. So why is this important? First of all, most of the chunk drums you're going to come across have this tuning mechanism. I would say 90%, 95% of all the drums you're going to encounter um, at your school or any school you might come to have these tuning mechanisms. This is by far the most popular right now. The Ludwig uses it, the Adams uses it, the uh, Yamaha uses it. All, most of the drum companies use this tuning mechanism. Um, it's very easy to work with. Um, and it's fairly low maintenance. The problem comes in if I uh, have an old head on my timpani, timpano, if I have an old head that I haven't tuned in five or six or ten years, which sometimes, again, you come across that in schools, the head has gone down in pitch. Imagine never tuning a guitar for ten years, all right? So you can imagine how loose the strings are going to be. Same thing with the timpani head. So when this head goes down in pitch, 
my spring underneath is still the same tension. So now my spring is too tight for the head. Okay? So as a result, if the spring is too tight for the head, it's going to pull the pedal up. It's going to pull it higher. So when I want to push the pedal all the way down, I might, uh, you won't be able to see it, so maybe you can hear it. If I want to push the pedal all the way down, and if I hit it, and I take my foot off, it's going to make it come up. Because what, what that is, is when I have the head all, pedal all the way down, the heel all the way down, the head is loose, it's very loose, and my spring that is too tight is now wanting to move it higher. All right? So again, if I have my pedal all the way down, and the spring is too tight, if I take my foot off the pedal, it's going to come up like that. If the opposite is true, if the spring is too tight, and, um, sorry, if the spring is too loose and the head is too tight, you rarely have this problem, um, you have the opposite problem. When I have my toe all the way down, I had the drum as high as it goes. If I take my foot off the pedal, it's going to come down, right? So it has the opposite effect of wanting to come down. Um, so again, keeping, oh, so, so to fix that, I've, I get many calls from schools saying our timpani's busted, our timpani broken, can you help me, can you help us fix them? The, the best way, the fastest way to fix it is to get the drums in range. If you get them at the right pitches, then you're fine. So I would show up and nine times out of ten, this head's way too low. All I do is tune it up to, what should this be? Exactly. It should be an F. You guys are so smart. So tuning this up to an F usually fixes that problem. Now here's the other problem, and I am the perfect example of this. So there's a knob underneath the timpani. We talked about this with snare drum a little bit, but there's a knob underneath there. So when I was in middle school, I was bored. You know, they were doing their scales, doing whatever they do. I was bored. And so I was down underneath the timpani saying, hmm, what does this thing do? So I started turning it and turning it and turning it and turning it. Um, so your kids are going to turn this thing and they're going to get it out of whack just for fun, right? Because they don't know what it does, all right? The other problem is, so you have a, this, this, this um, a knob at the top is attached to a big long screw, which is then attached to that spring, all right? When I tighten it, it's going to pull that spring and make it tight. If I loosen it, of course, it's, it's loosening the spring. Now, the problem is sometimes this bolt, this long bolt, does not have a retaining knob or nut at the back, at the, at the bottom of it, all right? So sometimes there's nothing at the bottom of this thing. So you can loosen it so much so that it actually comes out, and that's exactly what I did. I was in the middle of band, and I would loosen, 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 and all of a sudden, bang, the spring smashed down. I was holding the thing in my hand. It was really loud. Everybody looked back at me. I was very embarrassed. Um, but it's not too difficult to fix. The way to fix it is I actually, what I did um, is I turned the drums on its side and then I took that thing in there and I just re-threaded it back into the spring. Um, so I think you, you can do it, but it just takes some work. So kids are going to mess with that. Even if the heads are completely in tune, uh, they might be messing with that. So again, you got to make sure that they're balanced, right? So again, the uh, technical thing is the, the spring has to balance the head. If the spring is too tight, if the spring is too tight, when you have it all the way down, it's going to go up, all right? It's going to make the drum go higher in pitch. If the spring is too loose, you're going to have the opposite problem. When I have my toes pushing it down at the highest end of the drum, it's going to come down in pitch. Okay, so remember that. It's kind of important. So, um, <clears throat> because like I said, most drums that I come across, if I go into any school, the first thing I, they say is our, our timpani's busted, and I look at the drums, and I, I can just get them into range, and they're all fine and good. That's usually what, all you need to do to, to fix that. Um, okay. The second type of drum is the ratchet style drum. So again, on page 168, figure 5.5, uh, these are very similar to um, what we just did. The difference is there is no spring. Okay, so we have a pedal that again goes up and down, same mechanism to adjust the head. But what we have is on the side of the pedal, on the side of the pedal, we've got a ratchet. Okay, you can see that. If you look down at the bottom of that picture, there's a ratchet on the side of the pedal. 
So there's a, uh, a, some sort of a release mechanism. I turn my foot to the side to push this knob. If you can look again, there's a um, kind of a, uh, an arm on the side of the pedal. I turn my foot to the side that releases the clutch just like your, your uh, clutch on your car. Right? You push the clutch in, it releases the gears. This releases the gear, I move the pedal to where I want it, and then I slide my foot back to re-engage the clutch. Okay? So if this is my clutch, if I'm here and I want to go higher in pitch, I disengage it, bring it up, and lock it into the new spot. Okay? Um, these are really simple drums. They're very there's a lot less maintenance because you don't have to deal with balancing the spring. The problem is you have to remember to move the drums to the side. And a lot of kids have never touched drums like that and so they don't know how to change them. And so oftentimes what you get is they just slam the foot down and it sounds just like your car when you don't use the clutch because you know really grinding the gears. Um, <clears throat> I like this tuning is this is my favorite type of tuning mechanisms. The downside is if this is my, again, these are my gears, if I'm here and I'm flat and I want to go, then I got, I got to go sharp, so I go up to here and now I'm sharp, I'm kind of stuck, right? So I'm flat, but I'm sharp, what am I going to do? So all of these drums have a fine tuning mechanism. So if you, again, if you look at the drum, if you look at about 2 o'clock, if you're looking at straight on the drum, if you look at about 2 o'clock on the drum, there's a little piece of metal sticking up behind the drum. And that would be over here. If these were, if these, if these had the fine tuners, they would be kind of out here, sticking up on the side of the drum. This is a fine tune mechanism that you can, on this particular drum, you take a drum key, you put it on there, and you turn it, and you can, a, a, a full turn is maybe a quarter step, okay? So you can really dial in the intonation if we have these. We actually have these on our drums over at ALF's. Um, they're really cool. It's interesting because those we have the regular uh, balance action pedals, but we have the fine tuning mechanism. And those are here. Sometimes they have them here, and that's where those are. They're closer, and you can actually use your hand as opposed to having to use a key. Um, but you need that fine tuning mechanism to make sure it's, it's in spot, um, in the right pitch. Okay, the third type, um, is there anything else we can talk about that? Um, but like I said, that's probably the second most popular. I like those a lot. If I had to buy my own set of timpani, um, <clears throat> I, would, um, I would get those just because I like them a lot. I like how they work, and I'm really happy with them. Um, the next type is the, uh, the uh, friction clutch. This, is, again, is a super rare drum. <clears throat> we really don't see much of these uh, today. They haven't made these in a few years. Um, so on page 169 is the picture of a friction clutch. Let me see if I can describe it to you. Um, so we have a pedal. So this is my drum. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a bar coming out from the drum. Attached to this is a small pedal. Right? Um, again, if you have your books, just get your books and look at the picture. But you can see, so it's a small pedal, and this small pedal can change this way, right? So the small pedal has a, has a, um, <clears throat> a fulcrum in the middle of it, and you can change the angle of this. This whole bar goes up and down, okay? So we have this, and then we have this for this whole bar. In the middle of this bar is a hole, right? It's a hole, and there's a, a rod going through that hole, okay? So this bar on the outside of this rod goes up and down, okay? So when I move my foot to the, pushing my toe down, it disengages the clutch here, loosens it up so I'm able to move the pedal up and down. So um, when I want to re-engage the clutch, I put my heel down or take my foot off the pedal and it re-engages it and holds it at a particular spot on the bar. So, if I want to go down in pitch, let's say I'm low, I'm, yeah, say I'm here and I want to go down in pitch, I'm going to push with my toe, sorry, it's not here, I'm going to push with my toe, and then I'm going to bring my leg up, which is going to slide it up here. So it's a two-part process, pushing your toe down to re-engage or disengage the thing, 
and then moving the whole arm up and down to change the pitch of the head. Um, again, you don't see this very often, but the problem is it's so similar. It looks so similar to the friction, to the accelerator uh, pedal, to the balance action pedal, that your kids, if you go to a, a, a conference or if you go to a, a festival and you have to play drums that are this style and you're not aware of it, what they're going to do is they're going to, if they want to go higher in pitch, they're going to push their toe down. Okay, because that's exactly what you do on these drums. They're going to push their toe down, thinking they're higher in pitch. Then they're going to take their foot off of the drum. Right? They're going to lift their foot up, which is, again, going to, because it's not engaged, it's going to go lower. So thinking they're going to go higher, the pitch is actually going to go lower because they're not used to that, that, that mechanism that grabs it. Um, so you need to be aware if you run into those. Again, I have the picture on this page is my old teacher's drums from about 30 years ago. Um, and these are a particular brand of timpani that were made in, in England. And so I have not seen this type of drum in the States in probably 20 years. And so you won't see many of these. But again, that is your friction clutch. Hopefully that makes sense. And again, if any questions, please email me or, um, or uh, reply to whatever um, discussion board I, I figure out how to set up here. Um, all right, the fourth one we're going to just briefly talk about um, is called the ratchet, ratchetless pedal. I'm not going to talk about it because you will never see it. What a ratchetless pedal is, is basically the ratchet type pedal, but instead of using an actual ratchet, it uses hydraulics or some other system, really high end system. <clears throat> Very few drums have this. I have not once, not to get back, I have one time seen a drum with this, and that was at a, um, at a conference, and it was on the floor. Of the you know they were showing it off. Uh, Yamaha. I don't even know if it was Yamaha or Adams, but they were just showing it off. But I've never once seen this, and never seen anyone play with these drums. So the picture of that is on. Actually, they don't even. Uh, well, page uh, 170, figure 5.7 on the right hand side. On the right hand side is an example of the um, clutchless pedal. Okay, that's really sophisticated, and those drums are insanely expensive. We're talking uh, fifty thousand dollars for the set versus about fifteen for these. So you won't go about this. So again, the four types of tuning: you have balance action or accelerator. Those are the two names. You've got uh, the ratchet. You have the friction clutch. And then you have the ratchet-less pedal. Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, all right, let's talk sticks. Let's talk sticks. Um, so, uh, tippy mallets. The tippy mallet that I would suggest that you buy for your school is the Vicfirth T1 General. This is the Vicfirth T1 General. Remember our snare drum stick, the Vic Firth SD1 General. This is the Vic Firth T1 General. And this is a fine, I don't know if it's fine, this is a cheap stick to get your kids started. It's about the cheapest stick you can get. It works well. Um, I don't like these. I don't use these. But they're good for um, your, your kids in high school um, if they can't afford anything better. What I do recommend, um, I think I actually have a pair of these. Let me grab them. These are very similar. Uh, what I do recommend is the Innovative Percussion uh, line of timpani mallets. Uh, I believe they're um, CT is their thing. It's just their general timpani mallets. They look like this. Um, I like these a lot. They're a teeny bit more expensive than the Vic Firth, but they are way better. It's a hollowed out cherry wood stick. Um, nice and long and straight. Feels really good. The head is really well made. Um, I like this a lot. Uh, this is to me, if you have a kid who wants to kind of take it to the next level, these are the sticks that you want to get. Um, uh, just last week, just last week, I went to pick up Logan from Eastman, because they, they're done for the semester. They're just done, done. Well, I guess he's going to try to take some online classes, just like you guys are. 
uh, but he's not going back. Anyway, um, we, uh, he had some leftover money.